Hey folks, Algris here with another what to think about when founding your capital city, this time with Egypt. All right, let's start with an overview of Egypt. Egypt has four families, riders, landowners, clerics, and sages. I generally find clerics somewhat underwhelming. They are useful situationally if you want to guarantee yourself a religion, uh, or for some reason you're on a map with a lot of sand because they are the only family that can build urban improvements on sand. Uh, but otherwise I find them pretty underwhelming. So I'm going to be working usually with riders, landowners, and sages with Egypt. Egypt has riders, uh, which are your military family as Egypt. You have the extra training, cities are always connected, which means they have two growth and minus one discontent, but they don't actually count as part of your trade network, so hamlets don't get a bonus for them, and uh, other cities can't be connected to them to connect to the capital. Um, you can, of course, connect them with a road or a river or something, uh, but you don't have to um, if they're out in the middle of nowhere. Mounted units start with Saddleborn. Saddleborn is 25% flanking bonus, which is really, really powerful. And importantly, the family unit, the family seat can build units that require horses, camels, and elephants. Egypt's unique unit is, is horse-based, so you want to keep an eye on where you can build horses, especially so you can build your unique unit in your capital um, or your second city. Because generally those are going to be the first cities you found, which means they'll get higher culture, and you need higher culture to unlock the ability to build your unique unit. Egypt next has the landowner city, which is its growth family. Um, it gets family cities for landowners get two extra growth per year. Rural specialists take half the time time to build, which is incredibly powerful. Not not the cost, but the time, uh, which means it, they just build way faster. And especially on crop resources, they get two culture a year uh, just from having a farm on some wheat, for example. Um, the full set of crop resources that you can have over here, it's wheat, barley, sorghum, and citrus. Generally, you're really only going to worry about wheat, barley, and sorghum early game because citrus requires uh, land consolidation, which is pretty deep in the tech tree, so not really an issue, but that can get your culture for landowner cities up faster. The family seat can very conveniently buy tiles. Uh, this is an important consideration because it means, for example, here, if we found this here, um, if we found this city site as landowners, this is our landowner seat, and we know we have more. And we can actually go grab those horses because we can just buy two tiles and then easily grab those horses. So that's a consideration. Uh, and the seat also gets two citizens, which is nice, especially with that rural specialist production time, because it means that you can get, you have two extra citizens that you can use to build rural specialists that will build in half time, like ore or salt mine or something. So sages, sages are your tech family. Um, they're going to be your source of science primarily, especially the family seat, which you want to get find a good position to spam inquiry, ideally somewhere with some marble, or barring that, you can uh, get a poet and focus on growth. Um, they You want to found them third, generally, because they, the seat gets a random technology when it gets founded, so you want to found it as late as possible. Um, you don't want to skip founding um, the sages site, generally. You can get away with it, but families get really unhappy. Every city in your empire gets, I think, a two discontent bonus if you skip a family seat, or four if you just only found with one family, which is uh, not good. Um, you can do it situationally, but I would strongly recommend just founding your three family seats first, especially when you're new to the game. Um, you can break that rule later if you know what you're doing, but even then, uh, you want to found it as your fourth city with the proper family seat as quickly as possible, um, just because the, the discontent spiral is, is not good at all. Um, and you also get legitimacy for founding family seats, uh, which is important because four legitimacy is 0.4 orders, and you're starting out with 10. Uh, so four is actually significant significant growth at for you. Um, family cities uh, give, uh, uh, sages give one extra science per specialist, and they have urban specialists cost less, uh, which is nice. Um, so, and they get two civics here, which lets them build those specialists a little faster if you don't have judge governors. Uh, Generally, I try to avoid hard building specialists, especially just because the opportunity cost is so high because you're doing some, you could be doing something else with that city, like building a unit or in the capital or the sages seat in case you could be doing inquiry. Um, so I try to use judges to, to buy my specialists unless I absolutely have to hard build a specialist for some reason. All right, that was a lot of preamble. Here is map one. Let's take a look. Uh, so. Given what I said about buying tiles, I think you can see which way I'm leaning here. We have some ore, which is great, um, but we also have horses in range. And since the unique unit for Egypt does take horses, I would likely settle landowners here. Yeah, there's no wheat, except for there is some wheat over here. And remember, we can buy tiles as a landowner city. 
uh, and it's not very expensive. Uh, for example, the border looks like it goes all the way here. So just for illustration purposes, it's going to cost me 20 gold to buy that tile. And now I have horses in range. I can buy this tile um, for a slightly increased cost. Um, I'm going to sell my starting stone, by the way, just, just to illustrate here. So I can buy that tile. Um, and I can buy this tile for 60 gold. So it goes up. Um, but you can see now I've added wheat, which is great for a landowner city, and horses, which is also great since now I can build my unique unit with some nice production bonuses from my starting city. Super important. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool about buying tiles. Egypt, I should also note, starts with that 400 wood, sorry, 400 stone, which is super powerful because it lets you basically lock in the pyramid uh, whenever the pyramids are in the game, which are they are not in this particular game. You can always check what wonders are in game by hovering over uh, the victory uh, icon, which shows you the available wonders in the game. There's always going to be two wonders that are missing. Here, the pyramids and the necropolis are the two that are missing. Um, actually, I think there's three that are missing. Yes, three that are missing because we're missing the, uh, the fourth the developing, the fourth developing wonder, which um, I believe, yes, that is, sorry. So we're missing the necropolis and we're missing the great ziggurats. The necropolis is a developing wonder and the great ziggurat is a weak wonder. So there's always going to be three wonders that are missing. Um, so you can always check that early game. Um, here, for example, we can't build the pyramids. Also remember pyramids do require uh, being on arid tiles or, sa or sand, uh, and there doesn't look like there's any nearby. Uh, generally, as Egypt, you probably want to build the pyramids every game you can build the pyramids, because the pyramids are really good. Like, really good. Build those pyramids. All right, so this would be a landowner start. Let's take a look at another map. Map two. So once again, we have some horses in our starting city, um, and we've got a lot of uh, crop resources nearby would likely found landowners. Um, probably moving one tile over to at least grab that sorghum and the gems, I think, to start. And then I would likely try to buy tiles for the other sorghum. Uh, but yeah, that lets me grab that sorghum. And then I can easily buy that tile and that tile. And uh, I can get the other two sorghum. And since I have horses, I can build my unique unit. Seems like a wonderful landowner capital city. Map three. Okay, once again, we have a bunch of crop resources, this time barley and horses. So we don't even need to buy the crop resources this time. They just start in our radius, um, which is kind of cool. I would likely move one tile up to grab those gems. Um, yeah, and then uh, just found landowners here and enjoy the three barley uh, landowner capital with some horses nearby uh, so I can build my unique unit. Map four. Once again, we have a bazillion crop resources and horses in our tiles, in our capital city's tile. I would likely uh, found to grab these horses here and go landowners. Um, this is going to be a super powerful, great city. Uh, just note here, you'll notice the city site over here has marble. This is where I'm going to found my sages site because I can get that marble and get a stone cutter on that marble right away which is going to be great. I'm going to hold off on founding there as, until I find settle my fighter city, because I want my sages city to be third, so I can get that benefit from the random technology being as high-tech as possible. Map 5. Um, no horses in this starting tile. Um, and no one kind of crop resource here. Uh, Egypt's unique unit does require a horse. Uh, no ore either. So realistically, because I like that early growth and because actually there's barley and sorghum here, I would likely push north a little bit here um, and settle this for landowners as well. Um, I can grab that barley and I can grab that sorghum. Um, and the gold will actually give me quite a lot of money uh, once I get a mine up on running, running, which should let me easily buy tiles. I see some horses down here which in theory I could buy towards if I wanted to be greedy um, and, and get potentially would, would want to. Um, although there's another city site, but again, you don't really want horses in your rider city. You don't want horses in your rider seat because they get the horses for free and not every city site is going to have horses. And if you're building Egypt's unique unit, you want to maximize the number of horses uh, that you have available to you. So you can build it in as many cities as possible because it requires horses to be built. 